there, my friend. This is Dr. Anthony Balduzzi, and I want to welcome you back to another episode here on the Fit Father Project podcast. And today is an exciting and special episode because we are welcoming back Fit Father Tom Dosh, who is the winner of our 2022 Transformation Contest. If you haven't heard Tom's episode, it's going to be linked in the show notes, the first one we recorded several months ago. Tom basically lost 100 pounds. He started in January 19 of 2022, and over the course of like three, four, five, six months, Tom lost over 100 pounds, which is an amazing accomplishment. He started in the low 400s, I think 402 pounds, and got down into the 200s. And since our last conversation, Tom has continued to lose weight. He's down another 30 pounds with the ultimate goal of seeing a one on the front of his scale, 199, something like that, which would be incredible, meaning Tom would have lost around 200 pounds. So he's chasing that goal down. And the reason I want to bring Tom on is because it's such a valuable experience for all of us to, to witness what it takes to lose a ton of weight and the different stages that you go through. The initial weight loss as a big guy can be very rapid and you're focusing on different things in the beginning months than you are when you get to your next 100 pounds. So Tom is basically in this episode breaking down the things that he believes are important to focus on, changes he's experienced to the rate of weight loss, the mental gymnastics surrounding, like looking at different changes with his body and the fact that this is a long journey, how to set short-term goals and manage long-term goals, super valuable stuff. And I'll tell you this, whether you have like 20 pounds, 30 pounds, 50 pounds, however much weight you have to lose, listen to Tom Dosh. This has been a man who's been dialed in, locked in, in the trenches. He still has a busy family, a busy career, a busy life, but he's found a way to make this sustainable. And I know that's the key thing for you listening to this. You want to make this a sustainable lifestyle change. Tom's figured this out and he shared a lot of particular things with psychology and the things he focuses on every week that I think you're going to find very valuable. So let's get into today's episode with Fit Father, Tom I'm Dosh. All right, Tom, welcome back to the Fit Father Project podcast, my friend. I'm happy you're here. Thanks. It's great to be back. So this is fun because this is one of our first like return episodes where you were a prior guest and to remind everyone, the winner of our 2022 transformation contest, you lost over hundred pounds starting in the low 400s. You got into the 200s and now we're on our way down, hopefully to see a one in front of the scale sometime soon. And I know nothing about what's been going on with you since we last chatted. So this is what's really fun for me. But I, I mentioned this before we hit record that you look leaner already. So what's been going on? Just give us some base stats about kind of where you're at today, where you started earlier this year, and then we'll kind of unpack what's been what's been happening for you. So at the beginning of the year, so January 19th is when I started a program. Um, and I was about 402 pounds then. And currently, I am at 265. Nice. And so, and the last time I talked to you, I think, was at the end of July. So it was about th- uh, three months ago. And so okay. it's, it's been about 26 pounds since then. Mm-hmm. Nice. Uh, and so it, the progress has slowed as far as just weight goes. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're trending in the right direction. It is not the same steep, like, Mm-hmm. crazy graph that was kind of going on and now it's kind of a bounce up and down a little bit and but still like trending down nice and you're in phase four of the program now is that correct so i decided to restart over and okay. so um i did so right now i'm just starting back uh phase two month two nice okay so, so you I, worked phase one in the summer phase two month one phase two month two is where you're at right now right cool well, I think it's valuable to bring you on for many reasons. You're obviously yeah. super inspirational and especially too for the bigger guys in this program. I think you just give a lot of context and a lot of hope of what's possible and what an average journey looks like when you're looking to lose potentially up to 200 pounds. Yeah. So what's what's become really clear to you um, past the 100 mark? You're down 100 now to get this next 20, 30 pounds off. What's been like very apparent to you has been some big lessons or themes that have come out? It's harder. It's Expect definitely harder, that, yeah. right? Like the, uh, like I think, you know, eating on the program originally, you know, is, was such a huge calorie deficit from where the weight I was that mm-hmm. I think like I saw some really big jumps as far as weight mm-hmm. goes um, and had monster weeks, right? Mm-hmm. Like not the, not the, not the recommended one to three pounds. They, they were pr- some pretty big weeks, you know, sometimes mm-hmm. five pounds at a time. Mm-hmm. And sometimes now there are weeks where I'm not really, um, losing it all. It's kind of staying the same and then it'll bounce down two pounds, stay the same for a couple of weeks. And so I'm seeing a lot more of like the plateaus here and there and having to kind of play with that. Um, we've introduced the carb cycling. So throwing in a low carb day in addition to the couple fast days, mm-hmm. uh, those, those were harder, right? The, they, they almost are harder than the fast days to me. 
Um, it, it, and so they're eating at a lower carb level and not, you know, for people in, who aren't in the program who are listening, they're eating at a lower carb level and then um, really, you know, the program's not low carb by design normally, mm-hmm. right? It's just healthier carbs at the right mm-hmm. times. Uh, but but they're, it's throwing in a day of low carbs to kind of use a different lever point there. Yep, yep. Uh, um, and so I think that's helped, uh, but it's been a little harder to kind of incorporate that. Sometimes I feel hungrier. And so um, talking to Kat and kind of bouncing off with her, we're increasing the veggies, increasing the, the protein, um, yep. adding a little more healthier fat. Um, to kind of get through that so that it's not something that's like really causing the burn. Well, let's pause there because I think it's a really good teaching point is, you know, oftentimes when you go deeper into the weight loss journey, even if you don't have a couple hundred pounds to lose, you do need to like pull progressively more intense levers to get even deeper. So you mentioned in phase three, we start the carb cycling. You do some low carb days, we're stripping out pretty much all the carbs. And that's a nice signal to keep things going. But then if you get too hungry, it's also a problem because then it doesn't feel as sustainable. So I think what you guys are doing is great. Increasing the veggies because you can add a lot of bulk to your diet without adding a lot of calories. So the perfect plates can look bigger. Healthy fats will keep you full. More protein will keep you full without like really contributing too much to the calorie load. So I think it makes a ton of sense what you guys are doing. Um, so that's been good. I think that I didn't do the low, um, the lower carb days at all during phase, uh, phase three. Um, mm-hmm. So it, it wasn't until kind of now doing these past couple of months that we've really introduced it um, mm-hmm. because I was still seeing the big jumps um, before then. And so mm-hmm. I think that that was part of it um, that we decided. Are you, doing, so, are you doing daily weighing? How are you tracking? And what's been working so, for you on the tracking front? So I didn't like doing daily weighing during that first 100 pounds because mm-hmm. the the weight really kind of was much bigger bounces. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would say I'm much more now in these, like doing these next 100, I've noticed that doing more daily weighing is good for the accountability. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like it's it's been a little more of a mental struggle after the first 100. You kind of, it's easier to get into bad habits really quickly, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like, even though I don't feel as good eating crap food, mm-hmm. it's real easy to consume a lot of calories if you eat crap food on a cheat day, right? Yeah. And so, you know, if you, if you eat a bunch of veggies, you don't end up overeating as much because you're filling yourself up with that bulk, kind of like mm-hmm. what you're talking about, eating the protein mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But if you eat like a carb, like say I have pizza with the kids or something like that, it's easy to eat too much pizza because it's just easy to consume that. Yeah, for sure. And so what I, what have you been doing with your free meals slash cheat meals? What's been your general schedule of that? What was it before? What is it now? It's a really important point to bring up. Yeah, so I would say um, it's generally like one meal out with Laura um, and that we will just order out most times, whether it be tacos or something like that, mm-hmm. uh, and just get them and eat them together, something along those lines. Occasionally it'll be pizza with the kids because they do pizza Friday nights. Uh, but normally I've switched pizza Friday nights to them having pizza and me having steak. Yeah. So, <laughs> and that's, that's been bad. good. I, I mean, that's a really nice compromise, right? I mean, that's an enjoyable meal and that works. Right. Nice. And, and so, um, in general, that's been okay. Um, I, I would see, say that I've had a couple, you know, like I went to a beer fest for a couple of days and, um, I've done a couple of different things that have been not completely on program, but like learning how to have that flexibility and kind of do more of like talk, plan it out ahead of time. Right. So yeah. like over the summer I did a decent amount of traveling and had planned that out ahead of time. Um, but now, you know, if, if a event's coming up, it's whether planning the fast day possibly afterwards, cause that, that feels good um, mm-hmm. to kind of feel like you're cleaning the system after that and yep. um, resetting. Um, so yep. that usually feels good. And then also making sure that like the rest of the week isn't crap around it you know that the, the eat, eating you know cat usually says you know you got um, two to three choices each day that mm-hmm. for your food stuff and then if you do that so you're making 15 choices let's say a week mm-hmm. you know if, if 12 to, to 14 of those are spot on you're going to be in pretty good shape yeah for, it's a really important way to think about it for sure and why and why prep is important to pave the path so that the vast majority of those are good and then being dialed in, especially with the holidays right around the corner, to yeah. recognize this is a family holiday, this is an out dinner with coworkers, whatever, and I know I'm going to eat more. And sure. like being super strategic about integrating the program into that. It's not like a deviation. It's fast day afterwards. It's maybe do a hard workout heading into that to you know yeah. to, to empty out some of the glycogen stores. It makes a ton of sense. 
um, I, I would say that in general, that, that, that planning makes a huge difference. Like it, it makes it, if I feel like I've done something that wasn't planned out, it feels much guiltier and feels like it's something that it's harder to, it feels like it's easier to be off the rails, right? And, and I, haven't, I don't, haven't went in with the systems that I know work as far as keeping my weight down and, and trending in the right direction. Nice. And what is the generally like you have weeks that stagnate like on average, is it is around two pounds a week now, if you had to guess or like, how does it, what would you kind of put yourself at for expectations for other guys kind of in the yeah. back next 200? Yeah. You know, my pace is a little less than two pounds a week. Um, when I divided, it was like, it's been like 14 weeks since the last time mm-hmm. we got together and then I've lost 26 pounds since then. Yeah. So pretty, so close, it's pretty, to pretty close to two pounds. Right. Yeah. Um, and, but there's been, two to three weeks of nothing, no, no loss, no, no gain, but just like held right there. Mm-hmm. And that was, that's hard, right? Like that, that's, that's hard after seeing really big numbers. Um, and knowing that and then having to remind myself that it's okay, that I'm doing the right choices, that when I see the weight losses that I'm getting like that healthier pace, right? That, that more consistent yep. pace that people see. Like, I, I know that my numbers are really like, oh, gosh, that's great. Like, I want that. Like, everybody wants that. But now I know that this is something that's probably more sustainable, too. Well, it's important. I think what you brought up is like, I'll call it the mental gymnastics, but the different yeah. patterns that kind of come through. Let's talk through that because you all, like, you need to like, and I think key point what I'm learning from you as you're sharing is like, we need to recalibrate in every stage. Yeah. And you've gone through certainly a recalibration in terms of rate of loss. Yeah. I'd be interested to hear about, you know, some of the mental talk and like stuff that you've done to maybe like refocus, uh, in any of the inner game stuff around this. So I had done the program starting in 19 for a little bit and it lost about 50 pounds pretty fast. Um, and then ended up, um, you know, maintain that for a bit. And then it was easy to kind of eventually, the more I let bad habits in, the more that they continue to happen. Mm -hmm. And so having that experience, I think helped me be aware that like, that's not a place I want to go. Right. Yeah. I kind of have that overall goal. You know, this is probably the first time in 20 years that I can possibly envision a one as far as the weight number goes. Mm -hmm. Um, even if it's one ninety nine, right? Like I can Mm -hmm. just envision that. And I feel it's possible for you now. Yeah. Important point, important point. Right. I mean, it's amazing. Like when you move forward, the goals that you're seem attainable for you, the great ones that were impossible now becomes possible. I think that's an important point for people to take in. Cool. And so, and so I think I remind myself that, that like, Hey, you, you got places that you're trying to get to, you yeah. know, you, you feel good. You feel like you have that energy. There's no reason to be unmotivated by your workouts or anything along those lines, mm-hmm. you know, still drag your ass to do the workout. You know, it, it, it doesn't matter what time of day it is. You know, if you haven't gotten it done in the morning, get it done at night, you know? And Mm -hmm. so for me, that happens a lot, you know, now that we're back, uh, I work in the schools. And so we're back to like a school schedule through most of this time as well. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of an adjustment of schedule and just making sure that, you know, I'm doing what I need to do to keep feeling good, keep feeling like I'm heading towards the right direction. Which is checking these boxes. And I think pulling these levers is something we talked about in our last conversation. I'm, I'm curious if you have the actual awareness of like, how you have the tendency to backslide. Is it, I start late night slacking? Is it, I miss a couple workouts? Like where is, do you have awareness of what your vulnerable spot is or your vulnerable patterns or where you think it'd be most likely you'd slide back into some old patterns? So yeah, I think, I think I could easily, you know, one of the late night, late night eating can be such a bad one, right? Yeah. Um, calories that you're not really fueling anything. Yep. Um, and so I think just going to bed, you know, is a good one or getting my workout in and then going to bed. Um, Mm -hmm. I feel like it's easy to be like, Oh, I didn't get the workout in. Um, Oh, well. And then eventually that becomes, Oh, I didn't get the workout in. I didn't get the workout in. I didn't get the workout in three days, four days. And And then, and now you have a rut. Yeah. One was like a little, little hole you start to dig and next one you find yourself in a big hole. That's the difference. So normally my rest day is Saturday, right? And Mm -hmm. Friday I missed a workout. And so Saturday became not my rest day, right? Mm -hmm. Saturday was no longer a rest day. Saturday was a workout day. And so I think that in general, like trying to kind of keep that consistent six days a week just as an act of like commitment, you know? And So your commitment is six days of activity a week. You're getting that in. That's what in your mind. 
it's important for guys to hear that because I, I found that that's definitely something that you you try to stick to and you're getting in and no matter what. And what I'm hearing too is like consistency is great because it gives us structure, but it needs to be balanced with the flexibility of our lives. Like things like a rubber thing's hard to break because it has some bend and some strength. So I love that you also are able to pivot and get things done on not the perfect day, but still yeah. checking the boxes. I think that's probably a mindset that is going to serve you super well through the yeah. next 50 pounds. And then I think the last thing is mentally it's easy was I can notice that because I've had success, it's okay to, it, it feels sometimes like, oh, I'll just fit this little, like I'll fit this little treat in here as well. And then eventually you're having treats three to five days a week, mm-hmm. you know, and that, that, that's, that's not a good way to kind of keep the trend going down because eventually you're not making those right choices, the 12 yeah. out of 15, the, the, the 14 out of 15 options. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, it's like you do something once, fine. You have some Reese's peanut butter cups, no sure. big deal. It was just Halloween, right? So it's on right. my mind. But it, when that like creeps in to be a multiple repetitive thing, that's when you're creating inroad. So awareness seems like the first step of yeah, like being very conscious step. about what you're doing. Yeah, nice. How's your how's your body feel this second time around through phase two? Like well, third time around if we're going to count the 2019 sure. as well. But like, what, what's it like going through again, approaching some of these new workouts again with a lighter body with a lot more exercise experience? It feels a little faster to get through some of the workouts. Um, it feels stronger um, doing them. I would say that I noticed the first time through this program this year that I. Every time you like for the MRTs, you would say, hey, go, I want you to go heavy here. Mm-hmm. And I would say that every time I went too heavy, <laughs> it, it, almost every single time. And, and mm-hmm. I just wouldn't pick up the rhythm of doing the workout. Yeah. And, and so now I will start at like a 20 to 25 pounds, even though yep. I can do 35 yep. and just get that rhythm down. And I yeah. feel like once you get that rhythm down, it is a much, it's a much better workout, right? Yeah. Cause, you, Cause then you're less likely, I'm less likely to kind of drag it into, Oh, I'm watching a show at the same time. Now I'm going to take a longer break. You know, my, mm-hmm. my minute break, my 30 second break is now a five minute break because I'm wrapped up in the show and it was hard doing, doing mm-hmm. the, the routine. And so I think making sure that I could get the routine done and that you reasonable, amount of time with, with, as well as with a good pace and feeling good about it. Yeah. And- that's, that's a really subtle, but very important point is like this idea of pace. There's a pace that makes you more engaged in these workouts yeah. and it's, it's a flow. Ideally these MRTs are a flow. Sure. So starting lighter, very smart to get you into that for sure. And you know, the idea of like, you know, the TV there or like whatever you put on, like I've heard it from some guys, some guys listen to music, some guys have the TV and like, again, be aware of like, is it making a negative impact? Is it something you can do? And, and maybe okay occasionally if you're just slinging some weights doing the Monroe or the Kennedy and have a little sure. stuff on, different maybe than if you're trying to bust your butt doing an MRT. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it needs to be a show that I, that I can zone out and just listen to while I'm working out as opposed yeah. to nice. a show that I'm truly wrapped up in. Okay, so what's it been like with people who've observed you go through this now you've been at this for a while people are like yeah. this is clearly not just a, a tom dosh fad this he's like right. he's into this and and you're continuing to progress with see results and you're coming back to school now and people are seeing you in new light what's it been like the kind of comments you've gotten or just interactions socially or just like the kind of feedback that you've experienced as you've been on this change and people are observing what you're up to yeah i would say that it's been very positive um but a lot of shock and all like wow like what the heck happened you know I think people from school didn't, I was probably wearing clothes that was way, were way too big for me um, throughout the entire time of losing from January to June. Mm-hmm. And so I don't think it was as notab- noticeable until I came back and was trying to wear clothes that actually fit, right? And then mm-hmm. weren't going to fall down while I was working. <laughs> and, so, and so I think that, uh, that it was a more obvious sort of transition, that it, transformation that had happened. Um, and people, people are wanting to know what happened. I'm generally, you know, the, the credit, I'm pretty humble about it because I've, I've failed before. And so trying to make sure that it's not something that I don't want to, the, the, I give credit to Fifth Father Projects and say that's what I'm working. Mm-hmm. Uh, but knowing that I, that the Fifth Father Project isn't what's going to fail me, that, it, that I, I, need, I need to make those choices and that it's not something that I, want the program to be like, oh, that wasn't a sustainable thing. I feel like this is a sustainable thing that I could do if I make For those sure. daily choices. 
Yeah, and I think what you brought up was it was also very powerful with this dimension between the humility and the pride. This kind of like this uh, this duality we have between those things. On one note, you it's absolutely true in my opinion to say that you have a lot to be proud of for how far you've come, and and that's good to experience for some time. But also, I love the humility too of just like where you're going, and also respecting the fact that you have seen vulnerability in the past and that you're still not there yet. But like yeah. both of those things, I think are motivating especially when you're able to, the both are expressed to some degree. And it sounds like you have your own internal balance with that. And that's really good. Yeah. I would say that it's, yeah, I tell people that I'm doing work, right? Like that it's definitely work, <laughs> that it's not like yeah. just an easy thing that I'm, that I've stumbled upon that was a magic bullet, you know, I, that, that I feel like I am doing the right choices as far as water goes, as far as food goes, as far as workouts go. Yeah. Um, that that's where the things are happening and focusing ever more on the process, which you're calling work here, but it's like process goals and outcome goals, outcome right. goal. Cause it's motivating to see a one on that scale, but process goal is what gets it done, which yeah. is checking your boxes and chopping the wood, you know, whatever, yeah, whatever for yeah, sure. you know, that kind of that mentality I think is great. It's kind of like this, uh, you know, a little bit of a blue collar mentality where it's like, we're here to like get after this thing. And I think that's the mentality that's going to carry you on. You're not afraid of hard work and it takes more hard work to get off that. I don't know how many more workouts it's going to take to see a one nine. And then when you're down there, it's not like you're going to like, Oh, I won the fitness game. I'm done working out. Right. <laughs> right. It's just Absolutely. Becomes more, ever more integrated into your life. So yeah. I'm interested on that note is like, does this feel like ever more integrated? Like what's it like now doing this routine? How does it fit into your life uh, differently than it might have when you started? If there's been any changes? I feel like it's a much, much more obvious thing that I'm going to get my workout in whatever time it is, whether I've gotten it in during the day. Um, you know, it's not a question for Laura or the kids. They kind of know that that's just part of what it's going to be. I don't feel guilty about having to go work out anymore. Um, I know that it's taking care of me so that I can take care of others. Hmm. Um, and so I think that's a big deal, right? That, you yeah, know, that's, their expectation of, your, yeah. of how you manage your time. Powerful. And that's in your home. That's yeah. Cool. And I feel like I am working on, you know, I'm in charge of generally the food at home. You know, I do the shop and the cooking and all of those things. And I feel like I have been slowly kind of integrating those little changes, you know, at home um, mm -hmm. for everyone else. You know, I, I never really forced anything on it. But now I've kind of like for this school year, I've kind of themed themed the meals. So, you know, like Monday's meat Monday and that way I can kind of batch cook a bunch of meat. And that way we have meat for later on in the week if we need it um, or for lunches. Mm -hmm. um, and then like Wednesday, I dubbed Wacky Wednesday and I'm doing some sort of high protein uh, breakfast mm -hmm. that then they can use throughout the rest of the week uh, nice. at different times. Because, you know, the breakfast that they were generally doing was cereal, right? Yeah, it, it's, there's better it's, options. It's, it's an easier th thing. For, it was an easy thing that I thought they could have. Um, and it's what I grew up on with cereal, right? <laughs> and so, but thinking through how much better I feel not having a high carb thing breakfast in the morning and then just like stocking the fridge with some more like Greek yogurt and stuff so that they have different options for that breakfast sort of thing. And then, you know, Halloween just passed, as you said. And so my daughter was just saying, you know, I don't feel like I can eat as much candy anymore because... I don't, I've been eating healthier. And so, yeah. you know, it makes me feel sick if I eat too much candy. That's really cool to hear. It is really cool. She, nice. it, it, Cause she's also been the one who said, dad, I didn't choose this healthy lifestyle. And I said, I know, honey, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, be, it, it shows you, honey. It shows you. You'll be 18 one day until then. <laughs> like, hi, uh, this is dad. I'll take care of it for now. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's really beautiful to hear that just the byproduct of you doing your thing is, is like bringing everyone along. And I think that's like the core of leadership is when we can really be integral and to like clear about what we want and like do consistent action out into the world. Like people see that there's authenticity to that and they want to follow people who look like they're getting good results. So it's, it's not surprising your family's following your lead on that front. Yeah. Well, so I want to ask a couple more things. Uh, what, what, what's, what's, so what, what do you think in your mind is like a, the rest of this year and the time frame for like this change and this transformation? What are you focusing on over the next three months? Um, is there a weight goal? Is it getting through the holidays with more grace than last year? Is, is January important to you with like another turn of this wheel? It's a one year kind of anniversary of getting serious yeah. again. Like what are you thinking about this near term future for you? 
Um, I would like to get to under 250 by the end of the year. Okay. You know, I feel like that's achievable, you know, in mm-hmm. a couple months. I feel like that's kind of the same pace that I'm at mm-hmm. and makes me accountable through the holidays, right? And yep. I, I think that's important to kind of, like, I think that I can be, uh, uh, there's, I felt, haven't felt deprived throughout this whole experience. I've been able to plan for different events mm-hmm. and the holidays are coming and I can plan for those events as well and, and, mm-hmm. and figure out a way to kind of build the workouts in around it, build the rest day in it, build it, build the, an occasional free meal, bulk up with the veggies and the protein at different meals. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that hitting January 19th and having done it for the full year will be big. Mm-hmm. Um, in March, I think I told you that we were hoping to do, take advantage of, of the winnings and, and put it towards a uh, family vacation. So during spring break, we're planning on going to California and do the amusement parks. Nice. And so uh, I, I feel like I should be able to fit on all rides. You will. Uh, and so How that's a big deal. That? That's yeah. huge. Like there's no limiting factor for the kids, right? Like, like if they want to ride the ride, I can ride with them. There's that's no beautiful. like just sending them off and be like, well, have fun. You know, that's, that's not what it'll be like. I'll be there with them and it won't, it won't be a problem. So, I mean, that, that, that's a pretty big motivating factor to stay, stay on the course and stay the course. Um, and then, as I said, I mean, I, I really want to hit the one, you know, and I, I anticipate that that'll happen by the end of next year, by 23. Yeah, 2023, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, as long as I keep on the same pace. Um, and so, and then we'll see what, what the next plan is after that. Yeah. But it, it's apparent to me that you are clear on the next six months to one year. Yeah. And I think that's so valuable it's because you have that clarity. It's like sailors have always navigated tough waters, but they had like a place that they were going to. They weren't just like hanging out and getting rocked. It's like, this is where we're heading. And it gives you that clarity, gives you the power to move forward. And you definitely have that to the end of this year. I love that you have the an anniversary in January and, and I guess one in March too, in the sense of like, you know, to take that amazing trip. And then by the end of next year, we both know you can see a one in front of that. So, you have a dialed in clarity, which is great. Have and you I did, at- I did read, I did read the uh, mission statement. That's what I was about to ask you. So <laughs> I'd like to, hear, so I'd like to hear about that, about your uh, your update to the experience of the mission statement. Now, yeah. And, and so I did that after doing the uh, phase three, f- finishing the peak eleven and all of those the three months there, um, and so that kind of launched into like the school year basically, mm-hmm. um, and and I could see some different goals. You know, like it, I've I had just been to the. I've been to the doctor recently and the blood pressure numbers were great. The doctor or was an RN were both thrilled with the weight loss and wondering nice. what the heck I was doing. And, you know, they weren't, weren't concerned that I was doing some hocus pocus or anything along those lines. Nice. But I think that, you know, I told her that I was going to lose weight and uh, I said, it's going to happen. And, and I'm sure that she gets a lot of people to tell her that it's going to happen and it doesn't happen. Yeah. And so it was good to come back with results and be like, no, it is happening. And, you yeah. know, I look forward to going back to the yearly physical then. And that's that's one of the things on the mission statement is to, to keep showing those results to people like that. Nice. Um, and she was very supportive and, and d- did a great job as actually having that original conversation. Um, she was an MD who I, w- I would value how she kind of went about it. It was a very loving, gentle conversation yeah. and just being like, what can I do to support? And I said, no, I think I think I know where I'm going to go. Yeah. Nice. That's exciting too. Just another, another container of accountability. You have many yeah. of these, right? Fitting on the ride is one yearly health checkup one and like having a lot of people that you want to, you know, elevate and be integral with and like come along with is beautiful. You have a lot yeah. of support in your corner. No doubt about that. Let alone the powerhouse of Catherine Schaefer. So um, yeah, no doubt. Yeah. No kidding, right? We could all use a Catherine Schaefer in our lives. For so, sure. Pl- plug, plug, subtle plug for Catherine Schaefer's coaching. If you want someone to keep you accountable, like she's yeah. she's the woman to reach out to for sure. Yeah, I, I go to her um, every other week now. Um, I was kind of going to her weekly. Um, I feel like I generally have a rhythm, but she's still great for me. Like as far as I, I would encourage anybody in this program to utilize her as as a support for the program. You know, to make sure that you're on track. It's really good to have someone to complain to. Um, and, and feel like, Hey, the, the scale number sucks. Mm -hmm. Like this is really frustrating that it's not moving. Is there something else I should be doing? Um, she was good with talking to, I hadn't, I've had a couple different times where I felt like really injured and felt like I couldn't, 
um, work out during those times. And that was hard. Like when you get, get reliant on those workouts as an act of commitment, yeah, it's hard to not be able to do them for a couple of days. So how'd you navigate those times? Um, I, I tightened up the, uh, nutrition as opposed to medicating with the nutrition, which is what I would have done normally, right? Yeah. Like in, in the past, that's totally what I would have done. Would have looked for quick dopamine hits from sugar, from carbs. Um, and instead I focus on making sure I was really hydrating, um, got the foam roller out, the massage gun, got in the hot tub a bunch. Nice. Uh, and, uh, and so I just did a bunch of like actual treatments, right? Like it was actually able to treat it as opposed to just trying to treat the pain. I think you've yeah. talked about that in one of your videos that like, yeah. it's not, not truly like just making the pain go away. Like some of it's a mental game. Like yeah. what can I do? And then also doing the right steps to take care of it. Yeah, well, what I'm hearing is like you're still checking that mental box of doing something to invest in the physical bucket. It just so happens to be foam rolling, massage, stretching, rehab stuff, which you're very fortunate to know exactly what to do for many of these things, which is great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, still checking that box, just substituting and tightening it up in the nutrition. Brilliant. I think I hope people listen to that and take that to heart because let's face it, as we continue to exercise, no matter what your age, injuries and nagging things, they do happen. Is yep. so you gotta have an ability to navigate that is a part of this toolkit of being sustainable over the long haul. And so I wish you uh, the rest of the year of like injury free training. And I also know if something does happen, you know to back off and exactly what to do and that's just part of the game. It's sure. just another part of the game. Absolutely. So I wanna wanna ask you kind of in conclusion to this update, which I'm so glad we did. Any, any advice again for some of the bigger guys who are listening to this, you know, just some more words of wisdom, um, yeah. you know, from starting out or maybe midpoint or like moving forward, but like, let's get some advice for some bigger guys going through this program. So the first thing is you have to come up, you, you have to follow a plan, right? Like I feel like, you know, it's been so easy to not be on any sort of plan, you know, to get that big. Like it's the only way that I got to 400 pounds is there was no, no plan being followed. It was just instant fix, instant um, and, and just constantly not doing acts of discipline that help my cause. Mm -hmm. And so now, you know, we talked about it as levers, but the acts of discipline that I do, and I would say that they're huge. You're like, so get that mission statement. Mm -hmm. And then the, the acts of discipline that I follow are, I always get my water target. Uh, I haven't missed that since being on program. Um, and so that's a big deal, right? Like, and it makes you feel like you got to go to the bathroom a ton because we're drinking a lot of water, 150 which is ounces, which right? Which keeping you moving and I think makes it a lot more likely you have good nutrition when you're drinking a lot of water. Those things yep. are very correlated. And so for me, I'll oftentimes do it in the, do a lot of it in the morning because mm -hmm. that way it helps with the sleep and things along those lines. Yeah. The, the meal timing, I think is important, like spacing out the meals mm -hmm. and not a continuous graze. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that's been huge, like making yep. sure that there's three to four hours in between each meal. Um, that they're the right sort of meal, the low carb in the morning, um, and then bulking with the vegetables to make sure that I'm getting enough food um, mm -hmm. at the other two meals. Mm -hmm. um, not uh, for me, I had to stop nighttime eating. Um, that was a big one that was bothering me, and so I and I bet that for a lot of big guys, that's a problem that they they follow that they could follow a plan all day long, and then they would start fueling sleep, and you don't really need to fuel your sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and it, it, I think it screwed up my sleep, you know, my sleep scores sure are a lot does. better, a lot better after not eating late at night. Right. And so, yeah. um, and which then, is a vicious cycle because you don't sleep while you feel groggy and crappy the next day and you want to get a hit of all these carb yeah. containing foods. And then like you're back on the train, right? It's going the wrong way though. That's right. So sometimes you got to just break that cycle. And so, yeah. I, I, but you have to break that cycle for that day. And, and, and each day that you break that cycle, you know, it continues to stack up and then you stack those victories. And then the workouts, you know, the, start the workouts. It, it doesn't matter what the weight looks like. It could be nothing. Like if doing nothing at 400 pounds, doing nothing at 350 pounds, you're, you're doing 350 you're, pounds. You're yeah. doing a lot of, a lot of weight. You know, Cat always says, you know, like what, what, when you eventually like cut down a little bit more, there's going to be a lot of muscle there because you've been moving a lot of weight around no matter yeah, what. For sure. And so, and, and I feel like that at those daily actions, each action feels like a level of commitment to yourself, right? Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're loving yourself, the creation that, that God gave you to, so that you can do more with it. Beautifully said, beautifully said. And I think in the process too, 
and you could speak to this more directly than I can, but you are changing your self-image and your relationship to yourself. Each one of those actions is starting to wash away the old and the years of negative self-talk and starting to recreate a newer version of, of the image of who you want to be and who yeah. you're living to be. And that's not an overnight process. It's maybe a multi-year process of continuing right. to like make those blessings. But as you do that, you get more clean and you get to become more of this like new version of you that you're making the choices aligned with. And it takes a long time to get to 400 pounds and it takes some time to get it off too. So yeah, you know, I'm, I'm reading a book called uh, winning the war in your mind by Craig Greshel. Nice. And it, and it uh, talks about, those negative neural ruts that we get ourselves into. Mm -hmm. And then if it's easier, the more you do the negative activities to kind of get stuck in that rut. Yeah. And so, so you have to break it, break mm -hmm. that cycle. And then you have to then counteract it, right? With some of that positive talk, that positive yep. stuff. It's still real easy to get guilty and feel those bad things about what got me to 400 pounds. Yeah. And, and so I'm still having to do those daily things, you know, yep. and working on coming up with new habits, whether they be a gratitude habit yep. or, a, or a positive habit of self-talk, you yep. know, to kind of get over that. Yep. And positive self-talk is one thing, but coupled then with action sure. makes it believable. I right. think there's this integration between like, you know, working on the language and, and I know this is what you're saying too, but like every time you go do that workout that, you know, was slotted in the next day or every day you do hit your water target. Like these are, these things are affirming things that make you believe yourself, become more integral with your word. You do yeah. the things you say you're going to do. And, and also the ability again, to like have a free meal, have a cheat meal and glide right back on track the next day because it's on plan yeah. turns like something that could be something that can negative groove you for weeks, if not months into just a part of how things flow. And then the nicest thing about it is that, that we were talking about the family. They're much more supportive as they've continued to see those daily acts actions right mm -hmm. they see that it's not just a fling you know that it's not not a not a one two month fad that i'm going to try out that they they mm -hmm. call dad the fit father you know dad's making another fit father choice here it is you know <laughs> yeah dad's not going to have that sweets because dad dad's a fit father and so you know in just realizing that they are seeing that as well yeah, and I, I, and I bet that's another bucket of accountability for you. And we're talking for about sure. this, you your doctor too. Like, like you want to live consistent. You're, you, like, you want your kids to look up to you and see as the greatest version that you can be and live yeah. consistent with that. So amazing. Yeah, <laughs> thank it's you. awesome. Thank you, thank you to your kids for holding you to the high standard that you're for holding sure. yourself to. They're All the right. best. That's beautiful. All right, well, Tom, this was a, a beautiful check-in. And I think next one um, will be close. I'd love to, if you're open to it, and I hope that you are, that we come another one, we get even closer to that, you know, yeah. one number. Maybe sometime around after you've gotten back from your trip next year uh, to, you know, to California and see some of the amusement parks, that'd be really cool to hear about what that experience was like for you. And then chasing down one uh, next year, I'm really excited to walk this journey with you. I know Catherine is too, and all the brotherhood. So thanks again for coming on. Um, yeah. Tom, you're the man. That's what thanks, I got to say. I appreciate you. You're the best. I love you guys. Love you too, Tom.